this is it. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, communications overview. This is a emphasis on the overview view part. We're just going to do a quick flyby, and um, I am happy to take questions at the end and take questions um, after the fact um, if you send me an email. So, my uh, I'm the deputy director here at the DPO. Um, when I was hired in September of 2017, I was hired to be the communications director. And most of my background is in communications work, which is why they've got me doing this, you might be asking yourself. So here are the, the uh, things we're going to talk about, the message, the mediums, your your resources that you can have available for, for candidates, and then the voters pamphlet, which I think was touched on earlier as well, correct? Yeah. Cool. All right. The message. So this is how you can help your candidate. Help them figure out what their message is. It should be simple. It should be something they say over and over and over again. And it should be repetitive. And repetitive. See what I did there? It really should be repetitive and consistent. And everyone that is out knocking on doors with this person and attending events with this person is should be so sick of hearing this person say that thing over and over and over again. That is how you crack you know, into the psyche of voters. It's by um, being repetitive and saying the same thing and keeping it simple. So clearly there are complicated issues that candidates need to discuss and respond to. But when you're talking about just kind of the message, the here's who I am and why I'm running, it should be simple and you, you should be repetitive. Here are your mediums. So here are things to think about in terms of how you're going to get that message out to, um, you know, other than just on the doorstep. Um, your local your local media outlets, you all know your local radio stations, your local newspaper or newspapers better than anyone. And uh, you probably know who there covers local politics, if there is anyone. Um, so I think, you know, a couple of things here. Um, if your candidate uh, makes some kind of announcement, and it doesn't have to be a big party or anything, it can literally just be a press release on a day when they decide this is the day, um, that is generally newsworthy. Make sure the reporter who covers this sort of thing has it, and make sure they know how to get in touch with your candidate and that they know they're running. Um, you know, uh, don't assume anything with these reporters. You know, if you see them, you know, hey, you know that so-and-so is running for this, right? Um, that's a way that you can help your candidates just by kind of using the, the social networking that you have with your local media. Social media. Um, you know, my, my key advice here on, on local races is to keep it simple. Um, it's for your candidate to keep it simple. It's for you to keep it simple and, you know, share your candidates um, uh, posts, share your candidates kind of uh, page here. Here's, um, you know, Check out candidate X, you know, we're, she's, we're voting for her because of, you know, this reason and, and she's the best. And, and, you know, even though your, your own folks, your own like internal folks that come to every, every meeting might get sick of seeing it, like just post it every day <laughs> or every other day. Um, because what you're trying to do is get it out to folks um, who aren't paying as close attention. So you can help with, with that exposure. Most of you have county Facebook pages or and or Twitter accounts that have far more followers than your candidate is going to have if they're just kind of getting started. So one way you can start is uh, sharing their stuff and sharing their presence and saying, "Hey, go go like this person, uh, or, you know, go follow her, and, and here's why why we're doing it." Letters to the editor. Um, again, you know, those of you that have uh, local publications probably. Um, know that most letters to the editor can get printed, or if you at least, you know, s send a few on the same subject, eventually one will get published. Um, there is nothing wrong with ghostwriting. You know, um, if you've got someone in your organization who is a strong writer, who doesn't want to be, you know, doing, you know, doors or things like that, I mean, have them just crank out some letters to the editor on subjects that are important to the community and why, um, why you are supporting the candidate in question. There's absolutely nothing wrong with writing letters to the editor and getting someone else to sign on to them. Um, you know, they, it's, it's helpful if that person, you know, puts their touch on it, but really it's no one's checking to see if your work is plagiarized. That's not how it works. Most smaller papers will run, are hungry for content and will take what you give them. So um, letters to the editor, great way to get the word out on your candidates and, um, 
a, a good, good volunteer task also. So these are things that you might already have that you can use to help your candidate once they've been recruited and are running. You can you know, use your email list to share their announcement, share their upcoming event if they're having one. Um, you know, hey, uh, you know, this candidate is doing um, a, a coffee, a meet and greet at this place and, and you know, just showing that your, the candidate is out there. I mean, maybe they get coffee there anyways, so it's just, hey, you can go bump into them. Um, you can also, like I said, share their social media posts. This is like the, the most, this takes so little effort. <laughs> just, you know, you know, go find your candidate and share them. And like I said, you will be helping them get exposure and helping them build their following. And then if you have a media list, I mean, I think that's a thing that um, many of you might have or many of you might be willing to put together and keep, keep up to date. That's that's the kind of resource that you'd be saving a campaign a ton of time on if you can just be like, here's everyone that you would need to send this out to if you were trying to get to our local press. So media list um, is always, always helpful. So the voters pamphlet was covered earlier. I just want to, you know, uh, emphasize that it is super, super important. I mean, you if there is only one thing your candidate does, other than files, they should get their voters pamphlet statement in. Um, I have in, on here that every single Oregon household gets a voters pamphlet. That's that's true um, for the elections that the Secretary of State does. Ron actually pointed out to me that counties may vary, but pretty much every household is going to get one of these. And so many people that you probably know from knocking on doors will say, oh, hey, yeah, thanks for this, but I, I'm going to sit down with my voters pamphlet and make a decision. So. Um, Really, really emphasize that. I mean, tell your candidates it's due the day before if you need to, but um, it's got to it's got to get in. Um, the the endorsements kind of usually people list them at the bottom, endorsed by you know these groups, this 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 uh, you know parent teacher association, this Rotary Club, whatever it is. Those are things that send signals to voters, and they they look at the person, they look at the name at the top and the photo, and then they look down at the bottom and they see who's on that team. So really put some thought into that and, and take it seriously. Um, the content in the middle is important, but it is the last thing that gets read. Um, and then finally, the deadlines are firm, um, you know, with the, the clerks and, and certainly with the Secretary of State's office. I mean, you can't be a minute late. That's, that's just how the rules are. It has to be in and there's no excuses. I mean, partially because these things are set in statute. It's the law. They can't make excuses. So even if there's a horrendous accident, you got to get it in by time, on time. So you might as well get it in a little early. That's all I had. That's the, the big picture overview, just trying to think of things that you all can be doing to help your candidates. Um, you know, another thing you can do to help your candidate, which I, I think has probably been referenced and we talked about more, is have them go to... A candidate training, well, we were, well, where we will do much more on communications, um, and I'm always happy to help um, help you with questions and and help your candidates. I want to see you know all the Democrats elected as we can. Here's my email, and um, we'll see if folks have questions here. If not, I will move on. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you have a question, please press three on your phone, and I will unmute you. And uh, I also want to. Um, I also want to suggest that if you, as a, especially as a county party chair, have a question about um, communicating with the media, please contact Molly for support. She's really good at, at uh, messaging and, and helping you get a clear perspective on strategies for Thanks, thanks, Ron, and I, and I really appreciate that. And and honestly, if you if you get in touch with me when you're getting media inquiries, you're helping me as much as I could be helping you because it helps me understand what reporters and press outlets are working on. And you know, it's it's hard for me to keep my ear to the ground as much as I would like. And I'm you know I want to know, so please don't ever hesitate to to contact me whether you need help or not. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, there are no questions. No questions? All right. Thank you. Awesome.